Today we are going to talk about the magnetic lasso tool as a selection tool to put in this image of Elsa into our crosswalk image and also this snowflake image to create something that looks a little bit like this. Okay? And so your assignment at the end of all of this is going to be to take your own real life image and impose in at least two cartoons, trying to make them look as realistic as possible. Um, and then there, if you add in a third cartoon, it's just extra credit, okay? So let's talk a little bit about the magnetic lasso tool. Uh, this image is gonna be really easy to use it with. However, when we start using images of like you, it might get a little more difficult just because of your hair or what you're wearing. Uh, the background's not going to be a clean white background like this, but this is always a good place to start with the tool, okay? So our magnetic lasso tool is going to be right here behind this lasso image. So the lasso, it's L is our keyboard shortcut. Just plain old lasso, lasso, lasso is just if you want to freehand something to select it out, okay? The mag, the polygonal helps you get straight lines, if that's what you need to do. And the magnetic lasso tool, what it does is it picks up the differences in pixels and adheres to one side or the other. Okay, so I want us to use our Control Plus to zoom in our in our in on our image. And I'm going to start up here by her shoulder. Now, here's a question for you. How do I navigate throughout my image without having to change to the move tool? Press and hold the space bar, okay? If you have something crazy going on right now, um, all you need to do is push the escape key to get rid of all those, the craziness. Oops. Sorry about my microphone, it fell. Okay, so the magnetic lasso tool to use it it's my preferred tool. I know there are some teachers that prefer the quick selection tool. I prefer the magnetic lasso tool. I feel like I can get a more detailed selection. However, it's really what your comfort zone is at. So um, as with anything in Photoshop, there's a million ways to do it and it's just however you want to do it, okay? So if I pick up my magnetic lasso tool and I start like right here between the blue of her dress and the white of the background, Click on my screen first, and then I'm going to give you some time to do this on your own. If I just slowly drag along her dress, do you guys see how the lasso, the tool, is like trying to find the edge of this image? Okay, that's why I like the magnetic lasso tools. It's trying to pick up the differences in pixels. Now, if I get a little crazy, my mouse comes out here accidentally. If I just push the delete key on my keyboard and back up my mouse, that's how I don't have to start all the way over. Okay, let's say, so I'm gonna quickly, don't, you guys are gonna spend more time with your selection, I'm just trying to get to the bottom here. So as I get to the bottom and I'm trying to make a better line for um, her dress, if I click, I can set anchor points and that's what those squares are. They're just anchor points. Okay, so I might, when I get to this edge point, have to set an anchor point to start going back up again. So, let's pretend, oh, oh. I don't know why this keeps trying to drag down. There. Um, let's say that I made this really awesome selection, do as I say, not as I do, you know, that whole thing. When I get to the end, look on my screen. Do you see how my mouse, if I try to, if I hover over the point at which I started, there's a little circle right by that magnetic lasso icon. That means my circle is about to become complete. So when I click on that, that's when I get my ants. All right. So right now I'm going to give you time to select out Elsa using the magnetic lasso tool. Okay. Doing your best. If you get too crazy and you're like, I'm just going to start over, the escape key is your friend. In this case where I like, I didn't even select her head, okay, I'm going to control D to deselect and start over. I press and hold the space bar to move around my image while I also have 
the magnetic lasso tool selected. So again, when you get to the bottom, I'm clicking every so often just to try to get as small of or fine as the edge as I can, setting my own anchor points along the way. If I get a little crazy, I'm going to push delete to back it up. Yeah, just follow along the edge as, long, as best as you can. Can you what? You want to press and hold the space bar to move around your image. So when you get finished, just click on where you started to complete your selection. And you should have the ants all the way around and you're going to control zero to zoom all the way out. And when I see everyone zoomed all the way out, I'm going to assume you have your ants on there and I can move on. All right, so once you have your selection made, you are, all you're going to do right now is control C to copy your selection, come over to your crosswalk image, control V as in paste, or V as in Victor to paste, and I'm going to control T and I'm going to readjust how big Elsa is and I will may probably have to adjust that more later once I get the snowflake in there but I'm just going to adjust her size and get my move tool to move her around. That's what I'd like to do. We're going to use the shift tool to scale her correctly so we don't make her look like flat Stanley. Okay, I can't stress enough on just the importance of using the shift tool to make sure it's scaled appropriately so that, like, just don't, excuse me, try to eyeball things because we always end up our eyes, our eyeballs deceive us sometimes, okay? So once I have my Elsa image, I don't need that anymore. I can close out of that one. I'm going to come over to my snowflake. Now we talked a little bit about this yesterday. So the difference between the Elsa image and the snowflake image is that the Elsa image was a JPEG, okay? The snowflake is a PNG. And what do these gray and white checkers behind it mean? It, there's no background. It's a transparent background. That means if I have my move tool selected, if I click and move this around, it's not taking any other constraints with it. So if you're looking at this like, ooh, how are we going to use the magnetic lasso tool to select this baby out? We don't need to. All we need to do is get our move tool, click, drag it up to our crosswalk image, drag it down. Okay, so if you're searching for images similar to like the snowflake on Google, you may add in like snowflake transparent background and make sure when you go to save it that it's going to be a PNG. All right, so I'm going to rearrange my snowflake. I don't want it on top of Elsa. I want it below her, so I'm going to move it to the bottom. And then I'm going to control T and I'm going to resize her, this image a little bit. 
Okay, leave control T on, but don't push enter yet. So I'm going to resize, make it a little bit bigger, and I'm going to leave control T, my transform tool on, so that I can do a, a couple extra things to it. So right now, this image looks very flat, right? Like it doesn't look as realistic as we want it to look because, well, it's an image and we need to use some different tools within Photoshop. So with the transform tool on, which I know that because I've got these sizing handles here, if I right click on my image, I have some other options. So right now this is considered the free transform tool. Where I can just freely drag my sizing handles where I want them. There are six other options available when you use the transform tool. Okay. I want you to look at some of these, but I believe the one we're going to use is perspective. And when you have perspective, you're going to be able to drag certain tool or handles. If you drag them out, then they're going to drag out with perspective. If that makes sense. Okay. So now you should be able to drag these in and out to make it look like my snowflake is on the ground. Okay. So this was the perspective tool. If I right clicked and said perspective, that's my tool. If you get it all messed up, you can always hit escape to start over, control T, resize, right click perspective, to make it look like Elsa is standing on this snowflake. And then push enter when you are happy with your result. Okay. You have to go slow with some of these changes because you can really easily twist things up a little bit. Yeah, that's what some of you are finding is you can really easily twist them up. Okay, I'm going to wrap up this video, but then I'll come and help those that need it. So again, your assignment is going to be to go find your own realistic background, find two for sure cartoon images to impose more if you want extra credit. And that is what's going to be due at the end of class tomorrow um, before we go into our weekend. Okay?